MSNBC really has to, they did it. They did it. They chopped up a Joe Rogan clip and made it look like he was endorsing Kamala Harris. MSNBC was exposed today for yet another set of lies. They deceptively edited together this video of different Joe Rogan comments to make it appear that he was singing the praises of Kamala Harris. She's going to win. No, she's not. She can win. She is a strong woman. She's going to win. No, she's not. She can win. They just want no Trump, no matter what. What do you make of that? That's the most brazen cutting together of something that millions of people have seen. Whoa, Democrats in panic mode. I think Trump's got this thing. They don't really... Whatever it is, is not really trying to fool you. It's trying to instruct you. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's good to see you today on the Speakacy Show. I ask you to like, subscribe, and click that notification button so when I get information out, you can get information in. Ladies and gentlemen, this video from Chris Williamson. I stumbled upon Chris Williamson a couple days ago, and... I subscribed right away, right away, because as I was watching this Eric Weinstein video, realizing this guy is another level of the playing field of podcasters. He's the real deal. He'll be in the Joe Rogan uh, category very soon if he continues to do things like this. I need to ask you this. Can you please try and explain to me what you interpret by what can be unburdened by what has been? What we can see, what we believe can be unburdened by what has been. What 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 can be unburdened by what has been. Who we can be unburdened by who we have been. What can be unburdened by what has been where we can be unburdened by where we have been and unburdened by where we are right now what can be unburdened by what has been what can be unburdened by what has been what can be unburdened by what has been what could be unburdened by what had been what can be unburdened by what has 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 been. What can be unburdened by what has been. Unburdened by what has been. Believing in what can be. What can be unburdened by what has been. What does that mean? I don't know if I should say. I don't know if I should say. There's a line in Marx. where sometimes you hear certain phrases like a world to win. AOC uses the phrase, we have a world to win, which comes from the end of the Ma uh, Communist Manifesto, originally written in German. I was in Hoi An in Vietnam. Now, I'm going to lose this one. So ladies and gentlemen, grab a drink. This is very, very, very interesting. And I'm telling you, it's going to feed your brain. It's going to give you more insight than maybe you've ever had. Hopefully, that's what we're trying to do here is give you information and education as well as be a little bit entertaining. So let me know what you think, ladies and please click that like button and subscribe. And let's check this out together. We'll have fun. And I'm going to take this jacket off because it's getting hot in here. Oh, my gosh. Can somebody turn the air down? So what the two parties would do is that they would run primaries. You would have populist candidates and you'd pre-commit the populist candidates to support the candidates who won the primaries. As long as that took place and you had two candidates that were both acceptable to the international order, that is that they aren't going to rethink NAFTA or NATO or what have you. We called that democracy. And so democracy was the illusion of choice, what's called magician's choice, where the choice is not actually, you know, pick a card, any card, but somehow the magician makes sure that the card that you pick is the one that he knows. Uh, in that situation, you have magician's choice in the primaries, and then you'd have the duopoly field, two candidates, either of which was acceptable, and you could actually afford to hold an election. And the populace would vote, and that way the international order wasn't put at risk every four years because you can't have alliances that are subject to the whim of um, 
the people in plebiscites. So under that structure, everything was going fine until 2016. And then the first candidate ever to not hold um, any position in the military nor position in government uh, in the history of the Republic to enter the Oval Office, Donald Trump broke through the primary structure. So then there was a full court press. Okay, we only have one candidate that's acceptable to the international order. Donald Trump will be under um, constant pressure that he's a loser, he's a wild man, he's an idiot, and and he's under the control of the Russians. And then he was going to be a, you know, a, a 20 to one underdog. And then he wins. And there was no precedent for this. They learned their lesson. You cannot afford to have candidates who are not acceptable to the international order and continue to have these alliances. This is an unsolved problem. There's so many things all coalescing at the same time from what's happening with the media to AI to discontent to fake news and cheap fakes and co construed, constructed. Did you cheap? Sorry. Fake news was a fake story. If you look at the um, Google Trends, fake news was a tiny story during the 2016 cycle that blew up immediately afterwards. It was the placeholder as the intelligence community or the blob figured out what it was going to do next to try to take control of the international order. You have to realize that that's the first real surprise in presidential history. Let's just address that issue real quick, what he just talked about. First of all, did Donald Trump interrupt the system? Did he interrupt the big scheme of things? Was he just an outsider who wasn't supposed to win? They didn't have to rig the election. He was a loser. He was going to lose. Everybody knew that he was going to lose. He won, and people were, like, shocked. And next, fake news. Since that happened, since he became talking about that, and people were like, maybe the news is kind of... A little fake a little bit right and you see the world of podcasters just blows up with just people just sitting in their houses like me and sitting in their offices like like me uh giving you the reality of what could be maybe it's like this or maybe it's like this maybe they're not telling us this so the fake news is now lo no longer a small thing it changed the world it changed uh social media as we know it because people are starting to come around to grappling on theories and opinions and maybe things don't sound right the way they're putting it out and it's changing the world which is about what we're gonna see now the fake news article that they clip cut and paste the joe rogan clip right that would be not real so that would be what joe rogan is saying is fake. Uh, for the people who haven't seen it, um, we'll just do a quick re recap. MSNBC was exposed today for yet another set of lies. They deceptively edited together this video of different Joe Rogan comments to make it appear that he was singing the praises of Kamala Harris. She's going to win. No, she's not. She can win. She is a strong woman. She is uh, a person who served overseas twice she, in a medical unit. She was a congresswoman for eight years. Yeah. She is a person of color. She's everything you want. She's going to win. No, she's not. She can win. They just want no Trump, no matter what. What do you make of that? That's the most brazen cutting together of something that millions of people have seen. They don't really, whatever it is, is not really trying to fool you. It's trying to instruct you. Uh, and retroactive continuity. Retcon. Yeah. I, but I didn't know what retroactive continuity, I didn't know that that's what retconning, I just knew it as retcon. So retroactive continuity is a literary device in which facts in the world of a fictional work that have been established through the narrative itself are adjusted, ignored, supplemented, or contradicted by subsequently published work that recontextualizes or breaks continuity with the former. So the question is, is, is what we're seeing just the Star Wars cinematic universe yeah. equivalent? Yeah, this is, this is Sherlock Holmes and, and Professor Moriarty. Uh, where Falls off a ledge. And yet here he is again. Um, it's every episode of South Park when Kenny's died. <laughs> So 
it's very important to understand the back of house in everything that you're doing. So, you know, when you go to a hotel, um, there's an entirely secondary structure of floors, elevators, entrances, cafes that are necessary to support the front of house, uh, which is the illusion of uh, the hotel that you're staying in. There was this recent Google furor, a mm-hmm. couple that being popped for monopoly, unfair competition practices. Sure. On top of, are they putting their finger on the scale and editorializing? If you search for Donald Trump's name, you get negative stories about Donald Trump and positive stories about Kamala Harris. If you search Kamala Harris's name, you just get positive stories about Kamala Harris. I don't think, I'm not saying that Google isn't, but I don't think that Google needs to editorialize the search results if there is such an unbalanced original content pool that they're pulling from. If you have this huge sway in terms of tech, if you have this huge sway in terms of the people that are writing the articles, I don't think you need Google to put their finger on the pulse. You're already, it's 90% in one direction. If you take from that pool representatively, it's going to move in that direction. Think about that. Honestly, just think about that for just one second. Just, okay, everybody uses Google that I know. I use it, my kids use it, my family uses it, all my friends use it. That I know everybody uses Google. Who uses AOL anymore? Just think about this. If Google is manipulating what people see it, into making them think what they want them to think instead of what reality is, the comparison that they're giving people to what reality really is, how many people really do, if they didn't mess, why do they have to mess with the search engines to make it Kamala based instead of just letting it flow. I mean, the most popular searches win. If they were winning in this matter already, they wouldn't have to manipulate it. They wouldn't have to adjust it to give their side more clout if that wasn't the case. But if they are doing that, then there's clearly interference here and there's a problem with what people will see at the end of it all in November. There's a, there's to manipulate because they've manipulated it that it's going to look like, like this when really in all actuality, it doesn't, you know. So that you've, you've now once again, uh, evidenced the same basic idea, which is uh, we'll just chalk it up to emergence. These are all emergent effects. Mm-hmm. That way you never have to posit intent. You never have to say that there's a finger on the scale. Mm-hmm. Great, you're out of it. Well done. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. insane, Chris. I pulled the ripcord and got out of it. So here's the thing that I thought that was really interesting. Wait, 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 but I want to understand something. Mm-hmm. How do you think you get to these levels of bias among employees? Do you think that something about being in tech makes you Democrat friendly? I think my working hypothesis is that it's cowardice. That Say more. In order to keep your job, you need to toe the party line, and the party line is somehow dictated top-down, not bottom-up. The idea is that the truth can be made unfit, so that to understand the world is to remove yourself from the chessboard. Mm. Thinking about the whether it's finger on scale editorially, whether it's drawing from a pool which is disproportionately represented from one ideology or another. Uh, Everybody is saying, I don't know what's going to happen in November, but it's going to be a nail biter. And it does make me think, well, given that we have what appears to be a, a disproportionate amount of sort of mainstream accessibility to stories leaning in one direction positively as opposed to in another, I wonder what would have happened had that not been the case. It makes a nail biter actually seem Kind of like an interesting... Who are these people who know all this stuff? Why am I out of this club? Everybody knows stuff about what's happening in November. I mean, the last time I was on the program, I said it's a million years. Um, Donald Trump was almost killed by an AR-15. Joe Biden has been suffering with some level of dementia that's been progressing through his entire term in office. When was the last time you saw MSNBC um, with five geriatric neurologists watching his gait, his speech, 
and telling you their professional opinions from publicly available data. You're in the magic show, baby. And the funny part about it is the reason I don't want to hybridize with anyone else is that responsible conspiracy theorizing is very much an adult activity. Responsible conspiracy theorizing is not based on saying, well, I've, I've got the certainty over here and I've lost it because I know I'm being lied to. So I've, I've, I, I can tell you exactly what is going on. Mm. It's the lizard people. Mm. And the same is true. It's, also, for, it's, it's magnified, I think, not just by the dissent, but also by uh, the platform. Same one. Exposure. People get jealous of exposure. And I don't it, think it's that. Oh, I think that it is very, very obvious that if somebody gets attention and someone else feels that it's undeserving in one form or another, that guy's a phony and look at all of the whatever they get. I think there's some of that, but I think to think that that's what it is, is mistaken. Not entirely, but I think that it's a, a really big uh, leverage function on top of it. I don't think that's true. Right now we have a country with no president and we've moved on. And what's Taylor Swift doing? <laughs> right? So my claim is, is that anti-interesting, once you understand what anti-interesting is, like, ass assume that you actually wanted just to humiliate people. You'd give them a talk. If you can't play the piano, mm -hmm. um, and I want to humiliate you because you say you're a piano player. Away you go. I'll, I'll get you a grand piano and a stage and an audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, this isn't that. Mm. These people are character assassins posing as critics. And I think that this is actually the big problem. We don't have debates. We have, um, we have street fights. We've got to pause there for a second for two reasons. One is I want to hear your thoughts on that. And two is I don't want to copyright. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to be copyrighting all the restrictions they got. What did you think? Do you think, do you feel like they're, there's something going on with uh, making sure their misinformation on one side is okay, but other misinformation on the other side is not okay. Um, it, kind of a rules for thee and not for we, or rules for thee, not for ye, I, I, however they say it. Is that what we're seeing here, where the guise of a new world order is coming in to smother the reality in the opinions and the debates which co bring in more reality um in order to keep their their scenes that are actually fake to be looked at as true or else you're canceled got to be careful got to be careful with that stuff i know what they're saying there in regards to content creator as far as uh chris williamson was saying i agreed with him when uh what's his name disagreed with him there when uh, weinstein disagreed i agreed with him on what he said about the trying to uh, make you look like a freak show and a fake if they don't feel like you deserve the attention that you're getting so they smother you and they smear you and as he's he was saying about the if you can say you can play the piano Weinstein was saying then go play the piano well I think that's what Williamson was saying was well they made Joe Biden go on a debate to go on stage and play the piano and he didn't so they smeared him which is what we're I think that's what we're seeing and uh, because it wasn't the actual truth so I don't know. I'm trying to figure it all out. And that's why I'm trying to bring you into this conversation with us to let me know what you think about what is going on behind the scenes here. And we'll keep going. And the string theory and the string theory critics, they basically don't appear on the same stage ever. And this has to do with wrestling versus MMA. You notice that you don't see, um, if wrestling is so effective, why don't we why don't we try it like professional wrestling inside of an MMA thing where you're jumping up on the cage and coming down and all this stuff? It's because one thing is an actual sport and one thing is a simulated sport. I've become aware that in that community, to show any kind of mercy or charity or generosity, th let's take the, the the debunking community. The people who are always telling you, don't worry, I will warn you about the bad people on the internet you're consuming. They work at the level of the human, and that's how you know that there's something wrong with them. I can't think of an individual who always gets everything wrong. 
you know, Donald Bro- Trump has done a lot right. Broken we, clocks. Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, no, it's not broken clocks. Yeah, yeah. Do you think Adolf Hitler got to be uh, the leader of Germany because he got every single thing 180 degrees wrong? You could set your clock to him how wrong he was. No, he had to get things right. But he's absolutely diabolical. So what do we do? We put a perimeter around him and say, look, that thing is so dangerous that we are going to act as if everything it says is wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what this comes from. It comes from a strategy where you can't afford to do fugu with certain people. You fugu? Um, Japanese puffer fish served as sushi where the neurotoxin produces a delightful tingling sensation on the tongue if carved correctly, and if served improperly, kills the patron. So you have fugu chefs, and you can't afford to let an unlicensed uh, chef serve fugu. And so in part, the strategy is you say, well, puffer fish is just too dangerous to eat, and therefore puffer fish bad. I think that that's what we do too often. We've just decided that effectively um, the debunking community wants to go after people wholesale. It's much more efficient to destroy the human. So the issue of serving fugu is really important. Hmm. And I think that it has to do with in what context does it occur? Does the host push back and sort of warn people about some of the issues that are dangerous? And is the, is, is the host, any, or is that person good enough to serve fugu? We've got an even more intense couple of months coming up than the last time that we spoke. You kind of hinted at it earlier on, this velocity of stories and forgetfulness, uh, either done on purpose, done by accident, done due to sheer random access memory limitations. How do you... Well, first off, is the speed of meme and news velocity that we're seeing now just classic election year and I've not been here seeing this up close before? No. No, the... I want you to think about the number of times you've seen a Mona Lisa meme. The Mona Lisa had to be the Mona Lisa for many years before it was worthy of so many memes. That Trump photograph where he's pumping the air with blood on his face had about four seconds before it was a meme. The concept of the sacred and the archival is being lost because of the novel environment provided by the internet. And the, the tools of editing, you know, the distracted boyfriend meme or hawk tua, right? These things are so fast that they are robbing us of the sacred. So with respect to the next couple of months, I don't know that anything crazy is going to happen. It's still a million years. Kamala was not elected through a normal primary system that we've had since 1968 when everything fell apart in Chicago for the Democrats. Donald Trump, the assassination story is a very, very bizarre one. I don't think Donald Trump is acceptable to the international order. I don't, I'm not saying that they will take him out with a bullet but they will certainly take him out with memes, tweets, data, analytics, skullduggery. And that right there could be the reason why Donald Trump is seeing what he's seeing and going through what he has to go through. He's not acceptable to the international order. We, we know that. He didn't climb the ladder. He's in a political space where they don't let people, regular people like me and you, we're not allowed in that political space. You know, who's who in the political zoo? He is not part of that people and he's not accepted there he never will be it's a very crucial moment for the world order and international governments to be aware of and that is my thought just my opinion and let me know what yours is and we'll keep going i need to ask you this can you please try and explain to me what you interpret by what can be unburdened by what has been what does that mean
I don't know if I should say, I don't know if I should say. There's a line in Marx where sometimes you hear certain phrases like a world to win. AOC uses the phrase, we have a world to win, which comes from the end of the Ma uh, Communist Manifesto, originally written in German. It basically says you have to wipe out what has been to arrive in the new. And where's and, it from? What can be unburdened by what has been? It's not a direct translation, but it occurs in Karl Marx. Now, I, could, I wasn't expecting this. I could find you the exact reference. If you think about what Mao had to do to wipe out Chinese history, what Pol Pot had to do, you're trying to wipe out memory because the memory has all of this burden. Why, do you, why, why is it important to go after doctors and lawyers and teachers and professors? Because in some sense, they are going to resist the new order that you're about to impose. You're looking for a blank slate. They're like a tether to the past. Okay, I'm going to tell a story I don't know that I've ever told anyone. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. Can't promise it's original to you. But I was in Hoi An in Vietnam. Now, I'm going to lose this one. Hoi An is one of the only beautiful places that I found, you know, like Hue and Hoi An. A lot of things were really ripped up in that war. And there is a, an unbelievable and difficult instrument, which the Vietnamese language is very hard, so I'm going to say it wrong, called, it would be written as Dan Bao. It's one string and a giant lever, and you pluck the harmonics, and it's supposed to be an intimate in instrument, I think sometimes played by the blind, where only the person who's intended is the recipient of the music. Okay, I see this in a window in Hoi An, and I become transfixed by it. And a woman says, I see you looking at this in English. Would you like to come in? And I said, I don't want to impose. She says, no, 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 it's not mine. So she invites me in, and there's this guy who appears to be brain dead. He's like deformed. I'm not going to get through this. And he's speaking very haltingly, and I, I don't know who he is. And something about music, something about journalism, something about a professional, I can't really make out what's happening. I'm asking about the instrument. And this woman brings him a guitar. And this deformed man starts playing some transcript, like Chopin or some, some piano concerto on the guitar at some incredible level. And I can't even imagine that his body can do it. And so I, I have no idea where I am or what's happening. And then he motions for like a book. And she brings a book. And it has all of these articles about this man tortured for his principled stand against communism. This man has been destroyed, mind, body, to the point where it's just painful to watch him. And I realized that basically he just, do you know what a nail house is? If you Google nail house under Google Images, do it, or you can't do it, or you're off the internet. No, I can do it. Tell me what you see. It's a tall building, an individual standalone structure in the middle of a road? There are these people who will not give up their homes when a shopping mall goes in or a road is put... And for some reason, they'll build a highway to screw over the person who stands up and says, I will not move. 
And the idea is that that road is the future, unburdened by what has been, and then there's some holdout who won't go along with the program. If Kamala Harris is as unsophisticated as we think she is, do we really believe that she is quoting from the dark depths of... Why do you believe she is as unsophisticated as you have just claimed? What did her father do? I don't know. Look it up. And by the way, I am assuming that I will end up on the Open Skies watch list as a result of this podcast. That is crazy, by the way, what happened to Tulsi. The trip, the quad S on her boarding pass... Donald J. Harris, the father of Kamala Harris, Jamaican-American economist, professor emeritus at Stanford University, originally from St. Anne's Bay, Jamaica. What kind of economics? Known for applying post-Keynesian ideas to development economics. Hmm. What's post-Keynesian? I don't know. Post-Keynesian economics is a school of economic thought with its origins in the general theory of John Maynard Keynes, subsequent development influenced to a large degree by a name I can't pronounce. I think that there was a lot of Marxist thought. And I, as, a, as a man of whose family comes from the far left, you recognize certain sorts of commonalities. I'm sure she would see them in me. Um, the Democratic Party is not communist. I don't think that that's right. That's the critique of many of my right-wing friends. But it is welcomed in a lot of neo-Marxian thought. I would say AOC is straight up Marxist. I don't know. I think Kamala is both is everywhere between crony finance and Marxism. You're talking about things for which you do not have language. So the reason that I said I don't think that Kamala can be as sophisticated as perhaps this obscure reference said a hundred times, apparently, according to the archive. Who's Charles Mingus? I don't know. Kamala's a lot smarter than you're given her credit for. I mean, this is the... Uh your point about how many levels through it do you go? This is the first one, this is the second one, this is the third one. Yeah. But in order to be able to do the Ukraine is a country, it is a small country, Russia is a big country, they are a bigger country, this is bad, time is all around us. In order to be able to do that self-referentially with agency, knowing what you're doing, the metacognition to be able to do that and play a role, to me seems, it's, that's like... 200 IQ stuff to be able to do that. I don't think so. I think it's 130 IQ stuff. I think you could do it better than you think. We, we could have a pretend, all right, I'm going to talk to you in a way you haven't heard before. Son, I'm going to school you on a few things. You can stop that silly grin and wipe it right off your face. Right, we can sound like however we want. I could affect some sort of Oxbridge accent or I could do Cockney. It doesn't matter. Um, you're looking at characters. This is why I wrote the 2011 kayfabe essay, because you're looking at professional... Do you imagine that the Iron Sheik... You know, who is the Iron Sheik? Who is Triple H? Who is the Undertaker? Do you think he actually works in a, in a mortuary? These are characters. George W. Bush, as a debater in Texas for the governorship, was really, really smart. And suddenly he got real dumb and folksy. And do you imagine he actually says nuclear? He knows it's nuclear. You know, I would learn to say nuclear. I could say nuclear. Yeah, I got to be careful with that nuclear physics. And I can, I can get Democrats to correct me and look like assholes every time. This is, there's an old FDR line, which is nothing in politics happens by accident. Don't get taken in at level one. Look, you know, a friend of mine, Dan Barquet, has a beautiful thing where he says, when someone looks at the window and one person sees the reflection and the other person is looking through the window and what's on the other side, they don't realize that they're seeing different things. I, I believe that in part this is 
a superposition of signals to Wall Street, to Antifa, to organized labor, to women in the workforce worried that they're never going to find mates and have children. These are ridiculous things crafted to appeal to many different people and, and to be decoded by different groups. Decrafted and decoded by different groups? Really? Like sophisticated you think <laughs> you know that's why i don't think this video will be pushed out the way most of my videos are on other topics because well exactly what he said but if it found you i want to thank you for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe as we continue kamala really is scary for very reasons for, for very different reasons than donald trump is scary and it's a weird election for me because I know three of these people. I know J.D. Vance, uh, and I know Bobby Kennedy a little bit, and Nicole Shanahan, Shanahan a little bit better. And I don't at all know the Democratic ticket, nor do I know Donald Trump. But Donald Trump isn't who he seems to be. Donald Trump is much more methodical, much better at business, and very shady techniques at that. You know, I, I think I remember hearing a story about how he bought a bunch of pianos for his hotel and didn't want to pay full price and then explained. Well, I don't know if the story is true, so I'm going to be very clear about that. Allegedly. Allegedly. And I talked to people who are in business with him. And one of whom did serious business with him said to me, he's a very good businessman who you wouldn't want to do a second deal with. Um, these are complex life forms. And I don't know what I'm watching. I do know that I, I, I had a meeting sort of by accident with a person in the Democratic Party who really tried to explain to me, Eric, can you hold off on the anti-Democratic Party tweeting? You need a higher level briefing about how we're actually conducting ourselves. I just don't think that the surface is worth very much. We're in a lot of danger. But if we get into an argument about ovotestes, they're going to lose as two biologists and I'm going to win. It's not all about motility of gametes. Uh, the world will keep throwing curveballs at you. And you have to begin from a heart open place to say some of us are shit out of luck because we fall in edge categories. And so I stand by everything that you and I did last time. It's a difficult place to be. And if you have to simplify it as to boys are boys, women are women, you're not getting it. On the other hand, we have to stop normalizing what is effectively a reproductive holocaust against children who we trusted to schools where people are allowed in to recruit into reproductive mutilation. And it, you've got to combine these in a superposition or you're just not getting it. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank you, Mr. Eric Weinstein and uh, Chris Williamson. Put that video out on his Modern Wisdom channel and YouTube. Y'all want to go and subscribe to him that's great he's got that video there it's about three hours maybe in 30 minutes 40 minutes something like that we kind of cut it up here just to give you the the key points that i found even though all of it is just incredibly i mean way out there information and i suggest you all go check that out it's really good and i want to say i'm a fan now anyway thank you all for watching i'm gonna say jesus is lord god bless you love you all and we will see you on the next one Bye bye